Yesterday, Martin Vanquish is back and it's still a pure driver car with its V12 engine. Even though it's not a naturally aspirated and uses twin turbos, the excitement of 12 cylinders is way better than any hybrid system. And for a GT like the Vanquish that is supposed to travel long distances with great comfort, the V12 is essential to make those long journeys less boring and much more fun. Without it, an SUV would be a better option. It's as comfortable and much more practical. The new twin turbo V12 can generate 824 horsepower and 1000 Newton meters of torque. But the interesting thing that stands out in the new powertrain is the specific power output of the V12. 158 horsepower per liter is unmatched in the segment. For example, the Ferrari 12 cylindry has only 126 horsepower per liter. That's a significant difference in power efficiency. And this makes the Vanquish able to achieve a top speed of 345 km an hour and 0 to 100 km an hour in just 3.3 seconds. The improvement in performance comes from a few enhancements to the engine. It has stronger components now with faster turbos to increase the airflow pressure and to hide the effect of turbo lag, Aston Martin uses a feature they call boosters. Basically, they make the turbos force more pressure in than what the driver demands and use a throttle flap and wastegate to send in only the amount of pressure the driver expects while accumulating the extra pressure for when the driver wants more power immediately. This is a clever way to deal with this problem. Other brands rely on electric motors now, like Lamborghini and Porsche, to cover the turbo's delay. But since Aston Martin still sticks to its traditions and has to comply with emission regulations, they need to use turbos and have to find a way to deal with their downsides. They're also using a high-performance engine oil with a larger oil cooler that can reject 50% more heat to keep the engine lubrication at its optimum. The ZF 8-speed automatic gearbox is now paired to an electronic limited-slip rear differential which will improve the control of the torque distribution and because it's linked to the electronic stability program, it can react to the car's behavior more precisely. The Vanquish is built on the same bonded aluminum body structure as the DV12 and the new Vantage, and it also uses the same suspension layout, double wishbone front suspension and multi-link rear suspension. But the chassis has a lot of stiffening components to improve responsiveness. Its lateral stiffness is even 75% stiffer than the previous DVS 770 Ultimate. Now, now add to the stiffer chassis the latest DTX damper technology from Bill Stein with a wide range of damping force and the driving experience will be different depending on the mode. Very comfortable in GG and very aggressive in Sport or Sport Plus. Now handling requires great traction. For this reason the tires are very important. Aston Martin developed bespoke tires with Byerly with a summer and winter compound to handle the performance of the Vanquish. They even have a noise-canceling system to make the driving experience more comfortable in GT mode. Now stopping performance is as important as going fast. The braking system has the carbon ceramic discs as standard. They're not only heat-resistant but also save 27 kg compared to the steel ones. Since the market is getting more and more hybridized or fully electric cars, the body proportions don't really need to be large, but for the few brands that still hold on to the purely combustion power, especially V12s, proportions can be a powerful statement. As the Ferrari 12 cylindry has a long front end indicating what's under the bonnet, the new Vanquish is also 8mm longer from the A pillar to the front axle. This is how they pose on each other, I think. We have a bigger, more powerful engine. Okay. There are a lot of design changes here apart from this of course, and they are performance oriented. The front grille is 13% larger than the DBS 770 Ultimate for better cooling of the 824 horsepower. The F1 inspired thermos louvers on the sculptured bonnet also help cool in the V12, and the bumper has side vents channeling air for brake cooling. Now the signature design elements of the new Vanquish are the new Matrix LED headlights with daytime running lights and the new panoramic glass roof. Actually, it's a first for an Aston Martin V12. It's also tinted for UV A and B rays protection. The drama starts at the rear end with broad and powerful haunches and the cam tail with integrated deckless spoiler. Now, the special design elements here are that panel that can be customized with various carbon finishes or body color. It serves as a background for the Aston Martin wordmark and the new LED light plates inspired from the Volkerae. 
These elements are intended to make the car recognizable in the dark and daylight. And I think there is no need to mention those exhaust chips and the full width diffuser. Now the interior is exactly what you would expect of any Aston Martin model. The high quality materials, sporty design and a great blend of digital and tactile elements. The DB12 and the new Vantage are part of the new Aston Martin generation and uses the new interior architecture with a better dashboard and center console, but the new Vanquish is extra special. It's a grand tourer that has to feel spacious, that's why the layout is a little different from its siblings. The center console is lowered into a horizontal plane to make the cabin feel more roomier, and it has a lower steering position which is very important to feel one with the car when in sports or sports plus modes. Okay, that's it for this video, thanks for watching.